It's Garlic Fries and Baseball, guys. Just a quick reminder that we come at you twice a week, and we would love for you to rate, review, and subscribe so you don't miss an episode. Okay, before we get into what Greg Johnson um, said about the front office and any free agency stuff, uh, let's work through the Zach Littell situation a little bit. And it's really kind of a one-two punch. And for those of you who, I can't imagine there are many of you, but if you're not aware of the situation, earlier this week, Littell gets pulled out of a game. He had faced four batters. He allowed three of them to reach base. Um, and and had then just gotten a double play. But here comes Matt Olson to the plate. It's an obvious pitching change situation. Gabe Kapler goes out to get him. Littell slams the ball into his hand and then turns around and barks at him a little bit. Gabe gives him a, le- a weird look, then goes, okay, I'm going to go back and do my job here on the mound. But then when he gets back to the dugout, he does the dad walk, right? Son, get your ass over here right now. We need to talk. They go down to the tunnel. I'm sure he got absolutely unloaded upon. And then there was the apology from Latell after the game. My bad. Um, you know, it was just emotion. He gets sent down to the minors the very next day. And Gabe Kapler essentially says, totally performance-based, with the caveat that being a good teammate is part of your performance. So let's start with the act, and then we'll get to the next day comments. But – a quick reaction on like, I know there are all the rumors of, oh, the guys have problems with Gabe Kapler. I see this happen. And the first thing I'm thinking of is that's a guy it, it, of all the people that you could have to have an outburst or a situation with Gabe Kapler. It literally probably the last person on the entire list of people who've worn Giants uniforms this year, maybe outside of Kevin Padlow, that you'd be like, that's the guy who ends up, you know, throwing the gauntlet down on the ground. I could not believe it. I know. It was absolutely stunning to me. First off, I'm thinking to myself, as it's happening in real time, I'm lying in bed like uh, half asleep, and I'm going, he's the only guy, Zach Littell, on the planet who thinks that Zach Littell should still be on the mound in this circumstance. Like, that's don't let the Kapler stuff, because people have their own opinions on Kapler. That does, should not formulate in the moment. He was wrong. Zach Littell. Totally. Doug, you gave up four consecutive what was it about, hits and walks or whatever it was, yeah. the combination of three and one. And then you are going to think that you're worthy to face Matt Olson in that situation of the game? How delusional are you? My favorite attribute in sports and in any life walk, uh, walk of life is self-awareness. And he lacked all the self-awareness in that situation. And like you, I'm saying, who the hell does Zach Littell think he is? I mean, he got the double play, the the, the batter before Matt Olson. And I was just like we often do with baseball. I was kind of in and out of the room. Yeah. I think I was cooking some dinner or something like that or maybe grabbing some dessert. And, uh, and, and, and so the bags are full. And, and, you know, I'm already thinking to myself, well, they're probably like, he's faced three batters. Yes. So I'm like, okay, this, that's probably it. Let's get this dude out of here. Cause he's throwing lollipops up there and they let him face the next hitter. It, um, they, who, and I forget who it was, but it was one of the Braves mashers. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it was Riley. I think it was Riley who he was facing. And, uh, and, and so I was already surprised that they let him face Riley. Exactly. He gets the double play. But now lefties coming up, and oh, by the way, you play for the Giants. You know how this works. Exactly. You're facing a lefty, I don't care if you've actually mowed through the the last two righties in a row. Alexander's in the bullpen. He's ready. He's left-handed. Go sit down. Yeah. yeah that, the whole it, so that it was bizarre. It was so crazy. And then to see Kapler storming into the dugout, let's go down in the tunnel and let's talk. I'm thinking to myself, first off, Littell looked a little worried. That's number one. But no one wants to say that out loud. Cap was furious with him, and he was ready to take him down there. And so, whatever. I I just look at this as like a lot of people are going to go, what the hell, Kapler losing? And look. It is odd. That's number one. It's odd because it's Zach Littell. Had it been a more prominent player, I would think there's more credence to this thing. But who the hell does Zach Littell think he is? And look, this is not exclusive to Kapler. This happened to Bochy. And this happened with a more prominent player on that roster than what Zach Littell is to this roster. Santiago Casilla, who won a World Series as a closer in 2014, in 2016 of May, him and Bochi got into it. Now, he apologized almost immediately, but this is not like exclusive to Kapler here. This happened to Bochi as well. I don't think people remember that. No, absolutely it did. 
Um, and so now let's flash forward to the next day because this <laughs> is where Kapler ended up actually taking the majority of the criticism he took yes. this week, which is that when he went out into the dugout for his pregame session and Latell has been sent down, he said this was performance-based and essentially it had nothing to do with what happened last night, which nobody bought. And then at the very end of the comment, he's like, well, I will also say that the, your behavior and, and what kind of teammate you are is part of performance. So he hedges a little bit, and, and, and here's what I would say about it. Do I think that Latell's outburst had something to do with being sent down? Yes, I do. Do I think that Gabe Kapler should be forced in a dugout to look at a group of microphones and say, yes, we sent Zach Latell down because he was an idiot last night? It seems like everybody wants Gabe to do that, and I'm sitting here going, look, you all already know A equals A, right? If I get that one plus one equals two and you all know that, don't get mad at me for not spelling it out when, when you know that spelling it out will embarrass a professional, okay? Like, you all want Gabe's relationship to be good in the clubhouse? How about start here? Don't kick a teammate while he's down. You just sent him to sack. We all know what happened. Why should Gabe Kapler be forced to say it in front of the media the next day. I don't think that's fair. It's called tact. See, this is the way I look at this. It, it's reading the room if you're a management position, no matter what the industry is, and not throwing one of your guys under the bus or gals or whoever's in there. I'm going to cite another Bochi example here because this one I found interesting. 2011, they get Miguel Tejada. Miguel Tejada does not want to bunt, okay? <laughs> Refuses to bunt. <laughs> And I remember Bochi being furious about it, but instead of throwing the guy under the bus, well, you know, the situation, we, uh, we kind of wanted him to bunt, and he didn't bunt. A couple <laughs> days later, he's DFA'd, he's off the way. But they didn't say it's because he was insubordinate and didn't follow the rules and wasn't a good teammate. No, no, no. They were just like, it's performance-based. Nobody questioned him. Well, because he had the equity of the ring. So this happens all the time. And like you said, here's the thing. It is also performance-based because if Latell was better, we would give him a longer leash, talent Absolutely. over tolerance. So it is a part of the factoring. I don't think he lied at all. Um, look, this is life. I don't care what you do in life. Exactly. Whatever the equality of a 5.08 ERA is in your <laughs> job, Yes. if that's your performance and you go yell at your boss, good luck to you. Yeah. Good luck to you. And, 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 and if you're still there the next day, wow, I'd like yeah. to know how you pulled that off. It's not how yeah. it works. So yeah, performance is a part of it and behavior is a part of it. And he should be in Sacramento right now for multiple reasons. Yeah. You know, the other thing that I keep coming back to, and this is more the Kapler slander in general, and again, I'm not really in on Farhan and Kapler and some of the ways that they go about constructing the roster. There's a we'll lot that they got to do to win me over. That being said, I will defend Kapler and the way he pushes the buttons every single day. Guys have to perform, and we've forgotten that element. And I feel like anytime someone doesn't perform on the field, on the mound, at the plate, we instantly pivot and become experts. Well, you should have went to this guy. It should have went to that guy. The roster top to bottom doesn't have a lot of high-performing players right now. So my question to everyone would be like, which card's he turning over here? That's the Greg Maddox card coming out of the bullpen. Where's where's the where's the Rob Nen card coming out of the bullpen? They got one reliable bullpen arm. His name's Camillo Duvall. Everybody else is a complete wild card at this point. So I'm not even mad at him, but I'm starting to see people use these things as sweeping indictments on who Kapler is as a manager. I just don't think it's fair.